The Res Chef cooking show uses everyday ingredients to make meals that are quick, healthy, and tasty. Host chefs Jody and Genevieve are young, busy moms from the Flathead Reservation. Their lives are hectic and fast-paced. Who better to share their favorite dishes? On this episode of Res Chef, Stephen Small Salmon and Mai Pete team up with Jody and Genevieve to make a delicious elk and vegetable stir fry. Hi, I'm Jody and this is Genevieve, and we are the hosts for Res Chef. Today we'll have a special appearance from Ponderay Elder Stephen Small Salmon, and he also is a teacher at Incusum, where Mai is a fourth year student. Today, this half hour, we're going to have Stephen and Mahi help us make a delicious elk and vegetable stir fry. All right, uh, this is one of my favorite recipes from the TLC camp, and that's for the traditional living challenge. And um, to start off, we'll just um, get the rice going. So we're going to do one cup of rice and two cups of water. Sometimes you can also substitute water um, with vegetable broth or chicken stock. It also makes a different flavor, a good flavor. We'll just have that cooking while we get the rest of the stuff going. So while we get the oil heating up, Jody can chop up some vegetables. All right. Do you guys want to help? Sure. Okay. We definitely want to use olive oil rather than vegetable oil or canola oil. Olive oil is a much healthier choice. And it tastes better. You want to just slice those ones, Mai, please? Mm -hmm. Yep, just cut the end off and then slice it small so that it will cook evenly in there. Oh, and we have to get the elk meat. Sne. Sne. And this is um, just elk steak that we're going to slice up, and it's healthier than the beef. But if you don't have elk meat, you can just get the thinnest or the leanest um, beef at the store. And for a stir fry, generally you want to slice it really thin. Do dry meat at the school, don't you? Oh, no. We, we dry meat quite a bit. Our children, <clears throat> we get the three years old all the way up to 14 years old. Mm -hmm. And we got the big racks out there and <clears throat> bed spreads, and we got about eight bed spreads that we then we have the children cut it up and teach them how to cut dry meat. Do you season it? Yeah, we we season it. We put um, not just salt. That's all we put on there. Sometimes we put pepper. Put it away for the winter time. Then we then we do buffalo too. Good. Yeah, we dry buffalo and during the summertime and and tastes pretty good. And it takes a couple of days to cut the meat up, to dry it. Put 
And while they're continuing to cut up the vegetables, I will show you how to cut an onion. You want to start from the top, the little head, and cut it straight down the middle. Place the sides down. Cutting it straight across in whatever thickness you desire. Then when you start to cut it the other way, it's automatically diced. It's always nice to use red onions with yellow or sweet onions. It has a lot of extra color. You can also use candles when you're cutting onions to keep, keep the uh, vapors from making your eyes tear up. Um, just have the meat going on high, and um, the pan's still heating up a little bit, but we're just using a frying pan, but you can use a wok or whatever you have on hand. Molly, do you want to tell us um, the Indian word for L? Steven said it earlier, but I want the viewers to know. It's a uh, it's the bull and it's nest a cow. So you thought this was a cow, El? Ma'am, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just guessing now because I, I didn't get to see the head or anything, so. But meat in general, that's um, skelch, right? Yeah, skelch. 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 How you say it in Indian? Mai, you have a CD that you're on where you're speaking and also singing in Salish, right? Mm, yeah. Can you tell us about that a little bit? Um. What kind of songs you got on there? We got emotion songs and call and response songs. We have um, my. Uh, I know you have a solo. Song. What's your solo? Yeah, I'm not King Song. Um, we have me and my sisters and my other two little cousins and my sister and my friend. Yeah. yeah, and we got a we got another one too that we have. Uh, <clears throat> the kids made uh, songs, you know, for the school, and we're going to be selling that at the school. And there's about um, six songs on that. And children's songs. Yeah, children's. It's not a children's song. It's just a regular song, but it's got uh, you know just inclusive has got a inclusive drum group. Yeah, I, I've heard you guys. You guys mm. are good. So cute. I just love to see mm. the girls. It's all girls and you, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The girls drumming and singing. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about Nkusam and the importance of <coughs> preserving the language? The Nkusam is, uh, years ago we kind of lost our language, you know, started going down. It, we didn't quite all lose it, but then Usam started six years ago with the Tini, and, and there was four of them started that, and um, to keep the language, and uh, I'm Pat Pierre and, and Sophie Quickus, who were the main teachers down there, started in with that, and, and, uh, and it's going pretty good, uh, the children from uh, age three to 14 years old are, are um, doing the class. And uh, we start at uh, 8.30 to uh, 3.30, and the kids go home. And 
we we try to stay with the language. We stay with the language all day, and they are they they learn. And we got the drumming group. They take them up in the mountains to keep the language, you know, coming back. And it's, we're really proud of our children. Yeah, I'm yeah. proud of them too. They're yeah. they're strong. Yeah. When you're doing a stir fry, you generally want to use um, put the vegetables in that are going to take a little longer to cook. The harder vegetables like carrot. Onions are always a good idea to put in first, too, because it puts a good flavor into the meat. You want to save your softer vegetables to put in at the very end so that they don't get too mushy. And as far as seasoning, instead of using salt, there's a great product called Bragg's Amino Acids, and it's kind of like soy sauce. It's got a really good flavor, and you just want to, you don't want to use too much. Just sprinkle that in instead of salt. Yeah, it's like a substitute, a healthy substitute. That's what uh, I think is important that you know you don't have to change your diet to be healthy, but you can just make your same foods in a healthier way by instead of using salt, using something like Bragg's, or instead of using canola or vegetable oil, to use the olive oil. So it's the same foods, but just prepared healthier. Does. So these CDs are available at Inkusum and also at the People Center. Yeah, they're 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 not not the last one we made. Uh, they're still coming out. Uh, we're supposed to be putting our pictures in it, and but they will 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 have them pretty quick. You want to cook your vegetables and your meat on, on medium-high to high when you're doing a stir-fry. Um, and you can use, there's all different kinds of vegetables that you can put in there. Um, today we're using carrots, onions, we're using yellow onions, red onions, we've got sweet red peppers, green bell peppers, and we've also got zucchini. You want to use about three pounds of steak, sliced thin. And we're also going to put some Szechuan seasoning. Um, today we're using about a tablespoon and a half. Um, we're not going to put all of this in here. We just want to sprinkle it in. And it's always best to start with a little and then taste and add more later. We were using um, some ground black pepper and again the Bragg's amino acids instead of salt. Also very beautiful to look at as well as delicious. Got a lot of colors going on in there. We also have a very small amount of crushed red pepper flakes. You wanted to use this very sparingly. It can be very spicy. So you just want to use a little bit. Unless you like spice like me, I would use this and about two more, but we'll keep it mild today. Yeah, I don't know how much heat they like. Do you like it hot? Oh, yeah, I like it hot. <laughs> We're away. also going to use a little bit of dried basil flakes as well. Yeah, we used basil up at the camp, and it, it really made a difference in, in the flavor of the food. And uh, Stephen came up every day. Did you come to yeah, the camp I, every day? I come every day up to the camp. And to me, it was. It was a good camp, you know. I, I enjoyed it. So many people up there and, and watching our diets and eating, you know. It's, it's really nice. Yeah, um, you're a coffee drinker, huh? We didn't have coffee up there. No, they didn't have no coffee up there, and I, I kind of snuck it in there, you know, and, <laughs> in my car, you know. <laughs> That yeah, was a good camp. It really it changed my life where I they taught me how to eat healthier and I just I love it. I'm enjoying it a lot. I've um, lost twenty five pounds since the camp and it's amazing. Yeah, just a little tweak in my lifestyle, just the foods and it made a big difference. And exercise, promoting exercise there. And we went on walks there and mm -hmm. um, 
we went and with my daughter we picked strawberries and so we would hike around looking for wild strawberries and so it was fun. I liked the cultural side too where they we did the um, camas and we got to go and find it and mm -hmm. dig it. Camas is delicious. And we had a camas bake up there at, at the one by Twin Lakes and it was really fun. And they had to swim out in a creek. <laughs> and also eating healthy can taste delicious, can taste better than eating unhealthy. You just got to experiment a little bit. Experiment with flavors, with spices and seasonings. Try different things. Ma'i, how long have you been attending in Kusum? Um, this is my fourth year. Your fourth year? And you'll be going there all the way through which grade? <laughs> How old does it go to? Mm -hmm. Well, she, you're one of the start, the oldest in the school, right? And so, as you grow, it progresses to accommodate you, right? Yeah. You're in the highest grade level. Mm, not the highest. Grade. Yeah. Are there kids in a higher grade than you? Yeah. Oh, there are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you like it? Mm -hmm. What's your favorite part? to um, hold conversations with each other sometimes. Do you want to practice with Steven? Okay. Do you want to talk Indian so we can hear what you're learning? Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> Sounds really good. Molly's also my niece, and so I I just think she's wonderful. But I'm proud of you for doing what you're doing and learning the language, and we're going to keep it alive. And I love when you sing on that CD. I wish we could hear it, but you'll have to look for it. Um, it has the little girls on the cover of the CD, and um, she sings the last song. It's a solo. Uh, what's the name of the CD? Amot Kim Kes Lempi. Can you say it a little bit louder, please? Amot Kim Kes Lempi. And what does that mean? Um, Creator, we thank you. Creator, we thank you? Yeah. Cool. And nice. Looks pretty close. Yep, it's getting done. Tell us a little bit more about yourself. Well, uh, I'm an elder, and uh, today we're having our, our dinner <coughs> just for the elders. And I, I've been teaching Indian. And <coughs> I had some uh, elders um, teaching me all my language. When I was young, we didn't talk um, in white, it is uh, my elders, I've, my grand folks, and I was always a pondere, full blood pondere. And um, I had some great teachers. Uh, I did a lot of sweats and medicine dances. And the winter times, the winter times were really cold a long time ago. Today it seemed like it's so mild. And uh, we talked Indian all the time. I, I, I miss talking Indian, uh, that's the way we were. And I had some rough times in school because I was, uh, I, uh, my language, I went to school there and, and uh, had some, that was kind of tough. But a long time ago, like I said, it was cold in those times and, and like eating the right foods all the time, you know. Go out and get pheasants, ducks, fishing. And we never had any TVs, we didn't have no electricity. And we had a lot of fun, you know. And it seemed like uh, later on, then we started getting electricity and, and all that. And, and I, I made a movie, this last one, Far Beyond, and it's still coming out. And 
now and I've been on uh, uh, commercials and voiceovers for LA posters yeah posters and lately I I don't know uh, I got older and, uh, and I don't know what happened it just I want to be on there and maybe recognize I don't know superstar just, yeah <laughs> I don't know about that but, that I I enjoy it uh, doing it and be on TV and stuff like that you know but the language is really something I, I really enjoyed. I kind of lost it for a while, but now uh, with Pat Pierre talking to the elders, it makes me really feel good, you know, it's being Indian, you know. Yeah. And uh, talking to him and I don't have to stop and think, uh, what am I going to say in Indian? Today he just comes out and, and uh, I just get, it's just nice, you know, it's nice yeah. and I wish more more people would learn how and start studying their Indian language again and and be and and be strong about it. You know. So that was your first language. Yeah, that was my first language. You know, it's, uh, and uh, I enjoy it. You know, and I do all that. And we sing together. We got our drumming group, and we sing. And that was my other. Uh, I really enjoy singing with. Uh, the kids, you know, they, they, they sound good, and, and I'm always proud of them, you know, they always get up and singing and, and dancing and all that, you know. Even though they're shy. Yeah, <laughs> they're, well, they're not really shy, you know, they're, just, they're not used to being in front of a TV yeah. or something, you know, but it's nice, you know. Yeah, you're doing a good thing. Yeah, and I, and it's, it's a good thing, and I hope it goes another... 20 years, you know, by 20 years, it, we started out with uh, three, then we got out to six, then 12, then 20, then now we got uh, 40. 40 you know, students? 40 students, you know. So how are you guys um, almost outgrowing your building then, aren't you? Yeah, we are. Yeah. We're, 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 we're outgrown it, you know. It's just, it just, it's so many. We need teachers, and we are always need teachers. Yeah, I think as my um, as my kids get older, I'll be able to help out more. Yeah, yeah. I hope more comes. And we got about twenty that's on the waiting list. So really, yeah. Are they tribal members or are they just whoever? They're whoever you know. But we prefer tribal members, you know. And there's different tribes, you know. They yeah. Come down and that's nice. Well, thank you, Stephen. Yeah. And thank you, Ma'i. All right, well, let's see how it tastes. Do you want to serve up that and I'll get some bowls? Looks beautiful. Here, go ahead. Oh, that looks good. Meat and veggies in there for me, please. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Stephen? Well, it looks delicious. I know Inclusum has done some fundraisers in the past. Do you know of where people could uh, send donations if they chose to just, have support? Uh, just over to Inclusum, you know. It's the old bowling alley, you know. Down yeah, there. in Arley. <laughs> yeah, in Arley, Arley, Montana. Yeah. All right, well, thank you, and thanks for joining us. I hope you'll try this delicious, easy recipe and watch us on the next episode. We'll have um, a special appearance from Lance Hawkins, and um, this is Russia. Thanks. Thank you. Goodbye. Res Chef is brought to you by Salish Kootenai College Community Health and Development and Ancestors Choice. For more information about Res Chef cooking shows, Ancestors Choice, the Traditional Living Challenge, or to contact the program, please call 406-275-4917.